While in these breathtaking surroundings, I've taken the opportunity to continue cooking in Isabella's kitchen. I mean, I have to say, I love cooking in other people's kitchens. You always discover new and like fabulous things. Mind you, with a kitchen view of the ocean, bird sounds and a general summer holiday vibe, I'd be silly not to. Next up, some more fishy moments. Snook is synonymous with the West Coast, and it's not surprising they're prolific around here and they're on the green list, which is good reason to make a Snook fish cake. Next, it's Snook and Sweet Potato Fish Cakes, perfect for lunch, dinner, or random snacking. For them, you'll need sweet potato, Snook, and curry leaves, onion, curry paste, lemon, and fresh coriander, and on the side, a sort of chutney dipping sauce made with chutney, yogurt, mayo, and fresh coriander. I think the nicest fish cakes are made when you actually fry all the ingredients first and really get the flavor out. I'm not a huge fan of fish cakes where you sort of use raw ingredients, because they can just be a little bit too bland. I suppose the one fish that isn't bland is snook. It's got a real good, full flavor. And you could actually use smoked snook for this recipe if you wanted to. If you've got some leftover braised snook, then you can absolutely use it to make fish cakes. Make a wonderful, wonderful fish cake. So there's some onion. Now, I'm just going to pop the gas on here. I'm going to fry the onion in some olive oil and a little bit of butter. So pop that in, just sort of melt it to bubble. Toss the onion in. If you wanted to use a bit of garlic and ginger, you're more than welcome. But I'm going to use a curry paste, and so you don't really need the extra flavours. It doesn't really matter. All you're doing is trying to get the flavour going. While that's happening, I'm just going to fleck. Now, I fleck the fish, but I think it should be in quite small pieces. If the fish is too big, then basically what's going to happen is the fish cake's going to fall apart, and that would be a complete disaster. So go through your snook again, because the one thing snook is is full of treacherous bones. And, I mean, we've gone through this already, but I can see a couple, because they are really, really thin, sort of like hair. I tell you, every time I look down at the fish, I see another bone. I'm getting a bit paranoid. I was just going to stir that onion. Yeah, so you don't need to brown it so much as kind of just sort of melt it so it's wonderfully soft. Because what you're going to do now is cook it a little bit longer, but this time with some curry paste. In that goes. And again, in terms of amounts, it really does depend on how sort of curry flavoured you want it and how much heat you can bear. Then fry it for a couple of minutes to sort of get the flavours to develop and really sort of cook the curry paste into the onions. So into that, we may as well grate a little lemon. Well, I'm just going to do it literally straight into the pan. It's that simple. OK, that's that. I'm going to let that go. I'm going to put the fish into here, reduce the heat. Now, the reason I'm putting the fish in here is that I really do want this to be a flavorful fish cake. You know if you're making one of those lovely sort of light mashed potato parsley and lemon peel kind of fish cakes? Well, that's one thing. But this is a kind of West Coast curried fish cake with sweet potato. You want big flavors. Delicious. And then just a little bit of salt, a fair amount of salt, and some pepper. And I think I want to add just a little bit of lemon juice. I mean, not a whole lemon by any stretch of the imagination, but just, you know, so things don't dry out. You can always add a little bit more if you want to as you go. Perfect. I'm going to switch that off and let the flavours become friends. And I'm going to turn my attention to the sweet potato. Now, I boiled it in water with some curry leaves in it because, well, just for that curry flavour, definitely not necessary. So just rub the skins off. Try not to waste too much. Look, if there's a couple of bits of skin left on it, I really, really wouldn't panic. It's not the end of the world. And it's also soft now. It doesn't, doesn't absolutely matter. All right, not small tidy up. I'm going to use the bowl that the fish was mashed in, mostly because we've got a drought in this neck of the woods, and we don't want to wash up erroneously. So break that up, it's a bit of a messy job, and then mash it with a fork. You don't need a potato masher particularly. You don't want a puree. You just want a sort of lovely sort of rough mash. OK, then I'm just going to toss the fish mixture into here. Now, because my potato is cold, I'm hoping that we're going to keep a sort of, the whole thing's going to be generally quite cool. Otherwise, what you've got to do is you've got to chill the mixture because it tends to fall apart if it's hot. Yeah, I think that's going to be perfect, really. I'm going to add some herbs because, well, it seems polite. And sticking with the sort of curry theme, I'm thinking some lovely fresh coriander. Chop it quite fine because, again, you know, you don't want your fish cakes to fall apart. That would be most unfortunate. Right, in it goes. There we go. And then mix it well. 
I'm just going to have a little taste, because the last thing in the world that you want is a bland fish cake. I mean, to go to all this effort. Mm hmm Yeah, no, there's nothing bland about this. Marvellous. Just pop that over there. Now I'm going to use this pan, a non-stick pan, just to make life slightly easier. See if it's on. There we go. And I'm going to use some regular oil. I mean, there's absolutely no reason to use olive oil for this situation. Right. Well, I think fish cakes are utterly delicious. They can be just a little tiny bit dry. What you can do is just make a sort of chutney mayo, because I think that using just mayonnaise, well, it just becomes all very, very mayonnaise-y, and you could just, all it is is tangy, and there's no sort of creaminess and balance. So a couple of tablespoons of yoghurt, and then, and it doesn't matter if you put the yoghurt thing in here, because I don't think anything will be affected. Stir some mayonnaise in there. And then I've got some lovely fruity chutney. You can use a hot chutney or a mild chutney. And the other reason you don't want to use too much mayonnaise is the chutney is sweet and the mayonnaise is sweet, and then it's all you can taste. Right, onto the frying bit. Now, as I say, if you've got time, then you should make little patties, put them in the fridge, and then fry them from cold. But we're short of time here. I've already taken over Isabella's kitchen. I think that's enough. So this is quite a soft mixture. And if you do put it in the fridge, then it'll become slightly more sort of solid, as firmer, I think is the correct word. Now, don't crowd the pan, because it'll bring down the heat of the oil, and then you won't get a good fry. That said, you're really just trying to sort of heat things through and hopefully get a bit of browning on the, on the outside, because actually everything's cooked, so, you know, there's nothing that can make you ill or you're trying to, it's just warmth, really. Just pop the last one in, I think there's enough room. Now, I think the trick here is to not fiddle with them. You want to get a nice crust before you turn them, so sort of walk away. In fact, I'm going because I need to wash my hands. Do a little shake, but now resist the need to fiddle because you do want a sort of a good crust to form, and a good crust takes a good five minutes. And actually, you can usually see in the pan, just when things start to sort of crisp around the edges, and you can move your fish cake with quite a lot of ease around the pan. You know, it's not sticking. It's a good time to, well, give it a whirl. Let's see. There we go. Marvellous. Now, look here. Can't you see the beautiful, that lovely orange sweet potato? Gives us such a lovely colour. Just going to get a plate. Go. And then maybe just decant the sauce. As I said, you know, a little bit of a green speckle here and there in the sauce won't go amiss. And actually, if you want to serve this really sort of like um, a cocktail party, you could make little fish balls rather than fish cakes. Even turn it into a fish burger, actually. Quite nice. All right, and out they come. I do find it easier if you have a little palette knife than a really big spatula. Palette knives sort of seem to be more delicate. Mm -hmm. Voila. So toss a herb on top or scatter some over. And there you have it. Really simple, very delicious and hugely healthy, actually, fish cakes. These fish cakes really celebrate the best of South African heritage. West Coast produce, warm Malay flavour, just divine.